Hello and welcome to the RCB podcast powered by Kotak Mahindra Bank. One thing that I'm really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, that I find special playing for RCB, it's the, the Chinnaswamy itself, the fans and the city. So uh, walking around the streets feels like home to me. It feels like when I'm in Pretoria. It's a similar kind of setting, um, the big trees, get those thunder showers in the afternoon. I know it might sound weird, people listening to this like, oh, you are sucking up this and that, but it's, it's honestly what I feel. This is my driver's license, my metro car, and this is my fan card! Hi, my name is Danish. Welcome to the RCB podcast. My first guest is A.B. de Villiers. Wonderful. <laughs> Must be a special feeling to be first everywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, the theme for this uh, podcast is how has the IPL changed your life? So I'm going to begin by asking you that question. How has the IPL changed your life? That is a tough question, it really is, because it's, it's, a, it's a very deep question and it's a question I could possibly write a book about. Maybe I should yeah. <laughs> explain my, my IPL career and how yeah. everything unfolded. Um, it all happened very quickly uh, from 2008, actually 2007, end of 2007, I think we found out it's going to happen and then it was the auction. I had absolutely no idea what to expect. I was still trying to find my feet at, inter at the international level, still working on my technical side of or aspect of the game, um, still trying to cement myself in the Protea setup. And the next minute, we had no idea. A lot of people, a lot of rumors at that time were going around saying, oh, it's just one of those leagues again, it will come and go, it's such nonsense. Um, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. Yeah. I was just happy to be to be part of it, the first time I got picked up in the auction, um, I couldn't believe the amount of money that was coming my way. I thought to myself, what on How earth? much did they pay you? 300,000 US. Okay. That was, that. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money. That is, <laughs> that's so much money, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm always, I always, I can't remember even, but I was in my mid-20s somewhere. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I mean, that's life-changing right there. Um, I, I didn't, I've never celebrated financial success or well-being or whatever you want to call it. So it didn't really change me. Um, it didn't change my outlook on how I wanted to play the game. But to be picked up in the IPL was, was fantastic. I didn't know how important that tournament was going to be for me yeah. when I started off at Delhi. Um, I only realized that about five, six, seven years later, um, what the IPL is, is, is starting to mean for me in my career and my life and, and as a person and my growth as a cricketer and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But um, fantastic moment in my, in my career when I got picked up. But as I said, it didn't sink in until about halfway through my IPL career. And there's $300,000 more waiting when you release that book. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me take you back a little bit. What was your earliest memory playing cricket? Do you remember as a child running onto the field and playing the game? I do. I remember everything. Um, obviously, not everything. I remember the real specific moments mm -hmm. um, from a very young age right through. I remember the weirdest things as well. And I remember some dreams from, of when I was four years old, four or five. I very, very clearly, clearly remember my first very competitive tennis game when I was six years old. And I'm thinking now that's the same age as my oldest son. So, wow. It's weird to put that all into perspective. I remember the emotions going through my, my body that day. Um, I won the first game 6-3, the second one I lost 8-1. It was a round robin and I was six years old playing with under nine. So, okay. But those are the kind of things I remember. Cricket, I remember the backyard and playing with my brothers. Every single game, I remember how we were rolling the pitch and I was, I mean, four or five years old. I remember all those little details and facing some of the big boys, the ball swinging. There are little moments that I remember with a dustbin at the back. That's weird, but <laughs> it's stuck in my memory. So how many siblings? There's you and... You have brothers? Yeah, we're three brothers. Okay. And I've all of two older brothers. Okay. And, and all of them play cricket? All cricket crazy, golf crazy, sport crazy. My family um, is sport crazy. We grew up in a, in a town actually that was a little bit sport mad. Really. What, town, what town is this? It's called Bella Bella now. Um, it used to be known as Warm Baths. Okay. Uh, my dad is still a doctor there. He's been a doctor for I think over 40 years there now. So there is no specific moment where you remember 
saying, all right, I want to drop everything else and just focus on cricket. When, when did you think this was going to be your career? I'd, I'd say there was a couple of moments. Um, I think cricket just became more promising in my high school, high school years. Um, I, I played a lot of rugby. I still had hopes with golf and tennis a bit. It was always like, mm, you know, but I sort of stopped as well. So I, I didn't really know where I was going with that. I still loved the game, um, games of tennis and golf. Yeah. Still golf to this day and, and tennis, but um, don't get to it um, as often as I used to. Uh, but so it, it narrowed down in high school where I started playing a lot more rugby and cricket. So it was made, probably the two of them um, at that time. And rugby just, I mean, I, I absolutely, that's probably my favorite sport at school. Um, it was also known, well, the office where I went to is also known as more rugby school than anything else. Um, even though the cricket's caught up quite a bit over the years. So I always wanted to play rugby, I did. I had a lot of fun, but I always just knew, probably the age of 16, 17, I always just knew there, you know, it was going to be cricket. Um, I got approached by a couple of um, provincial teams, coaches, while I was at high school, um, offering me um, uh, financial stability or uh, a place in the teams after, after leaving school. So there was a bit of, you know, a bit of security for when I leave school to go and study a bit, but also, you know, you've got that backup. I can play if I want to. And so I think the coaches and the whole setup just made it a lot easier, probably because of results. I played, I played well, I scored runs, I did well at provincial tournaments, and that probably set it all up. Uh, was the frenzy around you as big as it is now as well? Because we hear sometimes from Indian cricketers of, you know, being these guys who are super popular in school and when they would play, just crowds would come and see them. Was that the case with you as well? No, uh, I, I, was at a, I was at a very um, uh, talented school or, or very good school, 1,100 boys and they're all, well, 80% are there for sport. Um, obviously academics as well. I'm not saying it's just a sports school, but okay. In primary school, I was one of five guys who were good at it and at, at cricket, for instance, in high school, all of a sudden, you've got to play well to make the first team. Um, there were like eight teams of cricket, 15 rugby teams, all in your in your age group. And I'm like, whoa, here we go. Oh. So when I started playing rugby in, in my first year at, at office, for instance, I played in the E and F um, group. So that's a long way out. I mean, A, B, C, D, that's, that's like five, fifth and sixth team. So I'm fly off. There are four other better fly offs than me. That's a that's a very good wake up call, you know. Um, so I had to work my way through with the rap being Same with cricket. Cricket was a bit easier. I made the first team straight away um, after the A team, and then the first team when I was um, my second year at school. So that was things happened a lot easier and and faster with cricket. So maybe it was just a natural progression, you know. All right. Um, I want you to play along with us now. Imagine that you join the South Africa rugby or football team instead of cricket, what would A.B. de Villiers be known for? No idea. <laughs> um, probably very similar things, I, I think, than what we're seeing or hearing now. Um, I love playing under pressure. I love being the guy who turns things around, who changes momentum. Um, I don't know, I, I'm, we all, I don't know, I'd, I'd say we all, I don't think we all like that. But I, I definitely grew up having this picture in my mind of me being on the stage and having to do something special to, to win the game for my team. Um, so that, that was imprinted in my brain from a very young age. And um, that actually ties in with the previous question as well. Um, it's, I didn't necessarily have the crowds growing up, but I could always, in my mind, hear that's happening. I could always feel like, you know, not that it was a goal of mine to play in front of big crowds, but I could, that, that was my thing. I wanted to play big moments and, and make a difference where people go, Ooh, that's, that's nice, that's cool to see, you just turn things wow. around. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, maybe my favourite uh, memory of you is being at a game in Kolkata, and this was about three years ago, four years ago, and uh, the MC in the stadium kept saying, let's go cheer for KKR. And then you walked in and the entire entire stadium went A, P, T. That's crazy. A, P, T. <laughs> um, before you became synonymous with RCB, you first started with Delhi. Um, just to understand, were you happy that Delhi picked you up? Uh, did you follow the auction closely? What happened? Well, looking back now, it would have been great if my first three years were at RCB as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's all part of the journey. I was very happy to 
when I, when I got picked up by Delhi. Um, I had a fantastic three years playing under Greg Shepard. Made some unbelievable friends in Glen McGraw. I mean, I can name the list. Dan Vittori even joined us there. Um, the list goes on. I mean, the, 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 the people that I met was the, was definitely the, the best memory of my first three years. Um, Andrew McDonald was there. I can. I mean, it's, it is a big list of players, and and connections that I made. So I would never ever ch change that for anything. Um, Team-wise, there was always a bit of this and that, um, some interesting characters involved in the in the management setup. But um, we wouldn't. Uh, we're not going to dig into that too, too deep. Um, I had a lot of fun. We made the I think the semi-finals in South Africa. We had some success and we also didn't play so well at times, but um, that, that's T20 cricket view. I had a fantastic three years. I was very happy with the change and something fresh and I had no idea what to expect when I got picked up by RCB, but the minute I walked into the setup, I knew this was, this was, my, this was my vibe, you know. Um, uh, I mean, that, that's a dream come true kind of situation. Looking back now, um, it once again changed my life and I, I've had a great ride. This is my driver's license, my metro card, and this is my fan card! Uh, do you remember where you were when the auctions were happening? How, how did you know that you've been picked up for $300,000 by Delhi? Uh, Delhi, we were actually in India at the time. I think we were playing someone or something. We were actually, funny enough, in the ITC Gardenia Hotel. Um, with a Protea team, if I remember correctly, and we were walking along the corridors and so on, I think Boucher told me, like, hey, you just got picked up. Because we didn't even have, I didn't even know how to follow on the cell phones where the auctions were happening. I had no idea what was going on. So I was told, and I think it was on telly, so eventually the names came up. That's how I found out. And I'd, I, as I said, the mood within the Protea setup at the time was oh, just another league. It's probably this and that. It's going to fall through. It's probably not even going to happen. Don't get excited. Stuff like that. So I was like, Pretty cool getting picked up. That's a lot of money. It can't be true, but let's see what happens. Um, AB, I'm going to ask you about Bengaluru as a city. Uh, they love you. You know, uh, people have offered you a site. Somebody's offered to give you their apartment. <laughs> uh, people have said, you know, just move here and you will be taken good care of. What are your memories of the city? I hope it's a big apartment because I have three kids now and <laughs> we need a lot of rooms. I'm sure you'll find a big enough one. <laughs> yeah. Um, th that's So my relationship with the RCB goes a lot deeper than just playing cricket for them. Um, and I don't think it would have been the same with any other franchise. And that's what I hold dearest to my heart is the fans and the city itself. I always connect um, with places that I go to. Um, I don't know, it's weird, I'm a bit sensitive like that, but I, I, I remember smells and, and visual stuff that I see. So it's weird that I, when I, the minute I get into Bangalore, there's a certain... Uh, olfactory response. Freshness in the air. Yeah. There's a certain something that I, that, that, I, that, that I sort of connect with and I, that, that feels familiar. And I, I would never pick that up in any... I've, I've thought about it long and hard. Mumbai, Delhi, you could put me in any, any other team, I would never have had that kind of connection. So that's one thing that I'm really... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, that I find special playing for RCB. It's the, the Chinnaswamy itself, the fans and the city. So I know it might sound weird, people listening to this like, oh, you are sucking up this and that. But it's, it's honestly what I feel. But um, yeah, so it's just, there's a special connection. I think it, I don't think anybody would think that because <laughs> you fit right in. I know that you would just walk down Lavelle Road, go get yourself a meal, walk back to the hotel, and all of this without being worried at all. And how do people react to when you're walking around on the streets? Look, there have been moments where it's too much, and that's that's normal. We all have our our boundaries or our limits where we go like, just give me a bit of space, you know? <laughs> um, but I, I, walking around the streets feels like home to me. It feels like when I'm in Pretoria. It's a similar kind of setting um, the big trees, get those thunder showers in the afternoon. I literally open up my hotel door when we get those thunder showers in Bangalore and I just sit back and go, thanks God, <laughs> I'm in the right place here. Yeah, this is what I wanted my whole life. So feels like I'm at home. It's not easy to travel for two and a half months at a time away from home, away from the family, but there's no better place in Bangalore to, to do that. What does RCB mean to you after all these years? Uh, you know, you've been adopted, like I said, by the city of Bengaluru. And uh, do you ever wish sometimes that you grew up playing in India? <laughs> I 
RCB to me, it's, it's, it's family. I mean, it's, it, it's been a life-changing 10, 11 years to me. Um, but like any family, there are ups and downs. There are, there are bitter pills, there are amazing rides. There's a bit of everything. There are good relationships, there are relationships that go sour. And that's all part of the fun. Um, I look back with no regrets. I think back at my career at the RCB is the most amazing few years of my life. Um, I think I could not have wished for anything apart from playing for the Proteus. Um, that could be a bigger high than that. Um, your second question was... Uh, uh, do you ever wish you grew up playing in India? Uh, I, I can't say that because <laughs> I'm South African. Yeah. Um, I think I'd... The, 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 exper the, the, the privilege of experiencing IPL cricket and the, the Indian public and um, the Indian way of doing things for the last, I don't know what, 15 years, if I add a few international years to that as well, it has been was, was more than enough for me to, and I mean, it exceeded all expectations. <clears throat> um, obviously, growing up in India would have been interesting. <laughs> Um, maybe I would never have even played for India, who knows? Maybe things would have been different. I, I think you'd cut it to like the uh, playing 11 of any country. If you're tough, being very humble. It's tough to make it for the Indian team. Eh? It's, you've got to be a very, very special player. I mean... I think they'd lay out a red carpet for you and be like, <laughs> walk right into the team right now. Uh, you never know. But this, I mean, as I said before, there are no regrets. I would not, I would never want my path to be any different. I made a lot of, I did a lot of good things. I made a lot of mistakes and um, I always find that question weird, like, do you regret your mistakes? No, you can't regret your mistakes because that's part of who you are, it's your character. It's what builds you as a man and obviously I made mistakes. I'm not saying everything I did was perfect, but without the mistakes, the good stuff wouldn't be there. So, it's part of who you are. Mistakes are the best teachers. <laughs> Evie, the next question and uh, this one's, I think, going to be, people are going to be just moving in a lot closer to uh, their speakers to hear this particular answer. What did it take to become Mr. 360? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot more that goes into it than just AB is talented and he was always destined to just hit balls and get a following. I don't know how the whole following happened. Um, and I mean, I'll forever be speechless when I speak about it. I, I don't know what to say now how it happened. It's just, it's incredible and I'll, to all the Indian fans out there, I'll be forever, forever grateful. There are no better moments, especially when I was played for South Africa coming over. I mean, you're supposed to get booed, <laughs> not cheered on when you when you when you're playing. So that's it's emotional for me because it's something that will that's done for life. So I've only got memories of that and and some videotapes. Um, but how that happened, I don't know. But um, it's just really amazing. How do you become um, an entertainer or someone who does special things? Um, I think it's a, a real deep desire, uh, the way you brought up, it literally starts from a young age. I think it's a whole life kind of commitment to wanting to be something special. And as I said, I, was, I, I clearly remember in our garage back home in warm baths, I would spend, I'm not lying, I think three hours a day hitting tennis balls on the wall, just myself. And I would go AB computer, AB. So I'd play against a computer, but against myself but literally imagining a crowd. And so from a very young age, three, four years old, it was in my mind to do stuff. It ultimately ended up happening on a cricket field, but it immediately felt natural to me when I'm at Chunaswami and they're cheering my name. I, I was surprised, but it felt like this is it. This is the moment. This is what I'm here for. Um, it felt like I'm at home. So I don't know how you do it. A lot of hard work, a lot of, um, Emotional roller coaster rides up and down, tears in the shower when I almost got dropped for the Proteus in 2007, when I was told it's my last chance. Um, so, extreme highs, extreme lows, and you gotta be man enough to handle that and to stay consistent and to keep coming back the next day and to grind, to grind, to grind. Um, just keep believing in yourself, as tough as it is. I'm shaking sometimes at the crease after I get a duck um, or after being in bad form but you just got to face those demons and find a way to get through it. And that's what builds character. At the end of the day, you, you become a better player, you become accustomed to handling those kind of situations. And then the minute that switch flips and you go like, this is not pressure anymore, now it's opportunity. Um, you become a dangerous <laughs> character out there. Uh, talking about AB computer, AB computer, I think that's exactly what every bowler is thinking when he's coming <laughs> into you. Am I bowling to AB? Am I bowling to a computer? Whom am I bowling to right now? 
Okay, so describe your first meeting with uh, Virat. What did you say and what was his response? Um, look, we, we ran into each other a few times before we properly met. Um, I knew about him, he knew about me. And um, I, I, I've said it a few times, I always thought he was a bit cocky when he was younger. So that was my initial impression. Um, even though I could see he's got respect and the, the basics are in place, I felt like he's, he's got a bit of a swagger going, you know. Um, so I, I didn't hold it against him because you need that at that, at that at that age. You need to you need to sort of have a bit of bit more belief than the normal guy. Otherwise, you get um, you'll, you'll drown into the, in, in the deep end as a youngster. So you need to have a bit of confidence and, and walk around like you you belong there, which he did um, very well. Um, but yes, I mean we just we had a very short discussion. I didn't give him any compliments or anything like that. Um, um, but I remember clearly at the Wanderers when. I got picked up at RCB and that was a nice discussion of you know what we're looking forward to play together, get to know each other a bit better. And once I got to um, to Bangalore, we sort of the connection just kicked off straight away. Um, it's been how many years of friendship now? Well, I'd say a proper proper friendship started um, when I started playing for RCB in 2011. Um, that's probably when we started becoming good friends, and it grew from there. It got. It was good in 2011, but 2012, 13, 14, it, we really became good friends and um, ever since, obviously. This is my driver's license, my metro card, and this is my fan card! So it's been 10 years of your friendship. Uh, clearly, the friendship's evolved. Uh, do you guys talk off season as well, or is it only when you meet here? that you're, you know, sort of born together and then at the end of it, it's goodbye, I'll see you again next year. How does that, <laughs> wh how does that work? It's, it's weird. I'm, I am actually that kind of guy where I don't really, I'm not good with keeping in touch. Mm -hmm. um, but for some reason with Virat, it just happens naturally. So I, we, we stay in touch. I mean, it, it's easy that he's on telly the whole time when I'm at home. <laughs> he's playing for India or he's, and if he's not, then I'm doing something somewhere and we, we stay in touch. I mean, it's just, it just happens naturally. Or I'll see a post on Instagram or something and I'll ask him how it's going. So we stay in touch even though we only see each other a couple of months here. Um, I'm, I've, from a very young age I've been bad with staying in touch with friends who move to different cities. I'll, I'm, I'll just stay in my little bubble and I'll just move on and people get in touch with me, we get in touch, I get in touch. I, I, I like things to happen naturally, if you know what I mean. I hate a forced relationship, but with Vera it's not, it's not like that. Uh, you texted him, if I'm right, during a series and uh, gave him a tip or two about batting. Do you want to tell us about that? I would never give him tips unless yeah. he asked for it, which he did in that, in that instance. Um, I, 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 I do follow um, the game quite a bit and I love uh, having input in my friends' games and I'm, I, I enjoy sharing everything that I know about the game, whether it's going to work for that guy or not, because I'm a strong believer and you've got to work through your own battles and obstacles, which he will and which he has done. And we all do that <laughs> to be successful at the sport. That's that's what you got to do. Um, but from time to time, there is something small that someone else might pick up in your game. And I mean, the stuff that I told him that day was very basic, like he'd still keep your eye on the ball. It looked like he was a bit fidgety, like almost trying to eat the ball out of the bowler's hand. I'd say, let's just slow things down, let the ball come to you. Remember you're good enough, you don't have to eat the ball off the deck. Let it come and just play. So stuff like that, but sometimes it's just one little thing that someone says and you go, ah, oh, I forgot about that. Should maybe just focus on that and forget about the rest. And ultimately you end up watching the ball closer and stuff like that sort of just flows naturally again. And yeah, so I've, I've had a lot of moments like that in my career where Callis would pick something up or voucher. We 90% of what they're telling me, I'm not listening to what they're saying, but there's one little thing that just goes, it stands out and you go like, okay, that's what I'm going to do and then you score 100. Maybe which Indian cricketer from any era do you wish uh, was South African and played with you in your team? Virat. 100% <laughs> Virat. Um, I think we have a lot of... Um, a lot of basics in common, a lot of, uh, the way we play the game is, is very similar, if I can say it like that. Um, he's a fighter and I, I sort of relate a lot to the way he plays the game. And 
another fighter in the team would have been great. <laughs> Someone who thinks like me. Let, let's give him a South African name. What would it be? Oh, <laughs> Vili. <laughs> Vili Kohli. <laughs> Perfect. Um, AB, what do you think uh, the IPL's contribution has been to world cricket? Immense. Um, very difficult to put in words. I think it's um, it plays a huge role in so many areas, in all departments. Um, development of the game itself, I mean, it's, 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 it's been crucial. Uh, you've seen the game go from a very average, <laughs> bit of a boring game in the mid-90s to what it's now. I mean, I'm not saying it in a bad way, boring was good then, it was nice to watch. But it's developed so much, it's evolved into this incredible, entertaining format and all because of the IPL, that's the centre stage. Um, there's absolutely no better place to, to learn your game, um, to think on your feet. You get swallowed up in a, an instant if you're not ready, if you're not on top of your game, if you're not prepared to learn, have a good attitude, have a smile on your face, um, listen when you have to listen. If you get one of those things wrong, you're going to be out of the IPL in no time. And that's, that's the tough part of it. Um, it's not an easy tournament to get into. You know if you play there, you're one of the great players in the world. For a youngster, I mean, <clears throat> for a youngster who survives for two, three years at the IPL, you know you're gonna you're gonna have a fantastic career. Um, it's done wonders for Indian cricket. Um, there's I've always I went back to South Africa about five years after playing the IPL, and I told them they we need a league like this because they India they India is gonna, just gonna just gonna take over world cricket because of the power of a tournament like that. And because I saw around me youngsters coming through and within a month or two being ready for international cricket. And I wish I had that kind of plat platform. So that's what the IPL did. It's definitely the front runner of all the leagues around the world. Um, I might get into trouble for saying this, but I think it competes with international cricket maybe even better. Um, if we can have more IPLs, it'd <laughs> be good. But it honestly does, it's up to that standard. It's, it's, it's the best cricket in the world. There's no doubt about it. Obviously, Test cricket is amazing. Ashes, there are big series around the world, but if you take the whole international scene and you give it a rating, I think the IPL will be right up there. Um, so yeah, I've just a fantastic, fantastic setup. So, AB, you've grown professionally and personally in the time that you've spent with RCB. Uh, you took uh, your wonderful wife now, Danny, out to the Taj Mahal to propose <laughs> to her. Uh, and you managed to pull that off seamlessly. Um, you took Kalveer and Jim, if I'm right with you, uh, uh, a part of our camera crew. Tell us about that. What is the story? I have a regret. My dress code that day. <laughs> <laughs> I had this. I look back and I go like, what was I wearing? What kind of jeans are that? I mean, it's like <laughs> these light, patchy jeans with a big <laughs> bottom. And I still have this shirt. Uh, my wife wouldn't let me get rid of it, so I, I use it as pajamas now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was a it was a nice call to do that. Um, I, I planned it way in advance, and I thought there's no better place, no more romantic spot than the Taj Mahal. And it, it took a bit of planning. We had a big win the night before. Um, I remember celebrating. I think to two, three a.m. Maxi was even there. Funny enough. Um, so we we had a big group of people there, and I told everyone that night that we were heading over to fly to Delhi and then a five hour car trip. So it was a it was a bit of a tonk the next day. Um, I think we left like at 6 a.m., got in bed at three. So we were exhausted and fly to Delhi and then an unbelievable trip. What a what a fantastic road trip and we just also loved up. Couldn't believe what was happening to us and yeah so we planned everything. Calvia was there with Jim um, as our security guard uh, guards which I told Danielle was necessary in India. You never know what's gonna happen. I even made up some story. I said no there's a bit of unrest there they're like two forces, the guys are shooting and I don't know what's happening. And she's like, oh my goodness, I'll take them with, the security must come. <laughs> so it was all planned, they had the cameras ready. Um, as she got ready to go get dressed, I, I told her we we're gonna take a trip or tour um, through the Taj and she got ready and then they mic'd me up and I got all ready and I was nervous. I couldn't speak properly. I don't know what happened, but it was all a bit of a blur, but I just remember when she came out of the Taj there and I was waiting on the grass. Um, the moment was ready, so yeah, it was, it was a fantastic experience. I know it sounds a bit cheesy to if some people, are, why would you do that? Take some of your to the Taj, and but to other people, maybe I've set the bar nice and high. It's a it was a very special outing.
uh, I mean, yeah, the bar <laughs> is very high. <laughs> is it hard, EB, to stay match ready considering now you don't play that much cricket, like you said? It's not really because it's a passion of mine to play cricket. So when I'm at home, I stay fit. I, I, I still play cricket. I, I, stay, I stay in the game. Um, the nice thing is, is it's in my backyard. It's, I'm at home. I can pick the kids up at school. I'm happy. I feel fresh when I come to the IPL. I'm determined to do well. I have my standards. I want to be the best still. So that'll never change. I don't, I'll never come to an IPL and feel like I just want to play cricket. If I don't come here to want to be the best in the world, then I might as well stay at home. So that'll be the day that I'll hang up my boots. Um, that's, that's how I feel with every season. When, I, when I'm not in the top five and people don't talk about how well I've played in that season, I failed. So that's how I feel um, coming to RCB. I, there's, a, there's a standard of cricket that I need to play and I maintain it throughout the year. And that's my responsibility. All right, AB, um, you know, thank you so much for answering every single question I've asked. I'm just going to go back to where we started from. How has the IPL changed your life? Oh, <laughs> must I answer that again? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what to add, except for starting to cry. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it's difficult. Cricket in itself, it's difficult to, to break it up. Um, but the, me, the minute I think back to my career, I think of the way I was brought up. I think about my parents and everything they sacrificed for me. Um, my family, my brothers. Um, everyone played a big role in me being here today. So I was I was prepared from a very young age for those moments to score runs at the right time, to take my opportunities when the time comes around, which I did. Ended up at the IPL and I mean, the rest is history. It changed my life completely. I, I don't know what else to add. It's difficult to, to put that in words. It really is a tough question. Um, all I know is, all I know is I'm, I'm humbled by it and Speechless. I'll be speechless for the rest of my life and playing for this many years at the IPL because I know how tough it is to survive for a year yeah. and having been here for quite a few. Um, the friends I've met, um, the, the, the innings I've played in front of big crowds, the following I've got, um, I mean it's, it's, it's insane to even think about it. Catch the RCB podcast powered by Kotak Mahindra Bank on Spotify, Ghana and Apple Podcasts.